Next company, from Los Angeles, California, we have Beyond Aero. Presenting for Beyond Aero is Valentin Shamal. Come on out. Aviation will be electric. Beyond Zero mission is to make it happen. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Valentin Chomel, one of the three co-founders of Beyond Aero. And today, I wanted to talk about one of the major challenges of our generation, climate change. And as Beyond Aero, we focused on one part of climate change, aviation emissions. So as you all know, there's an urgent need to decarbonize aviation. At the Paris Agreement uh, in France, where we're based, uh, in 2015, the entire industry agreed to meet net zero emissions by 2050. But if you see the trend of today's av aviation market, you get three gigaton CO2 equivalent per year in 2050. How to fill that gap in between? That's what we want to develop at Beyond Aero. So today, uh, at Beyond Aero, we are convinced aviation will be electric. That's the solution to fill this gap. However, we need to start from the light aircraft. That's why today I'm very excited to introduce you one. One is our business jet, but fully electric thanks to hydrogen technology. So here is another view of the aircraft. And maybe you're asking, why hydrogen? So maybe you're considering also batteries or sustainable aviation fuel as an option to decarbonize aviation. Well, there's two factors. There's energy efficiency of the entire conversion from green electricity to the flight, and there's the aircraft performance in terms of range, speed, and payload. So battery technology is good energy efficiency, as you see for cars, but it's not matching range or payload or speed for an aircraft. So this is not a good enough option uh, for this aircraft. Uh, sustainable aviation fuel uh, is a recombination of hydrogen and carbon capture in the air to make a jet fuel. Uh, this has good aircraft performance. Actually, you can drop in in existing aircraft, but you don't have the energy efficiency. The conversion process consumes too much energy. So on the long run, this is not a good enough solution. And hydrogen in the middle has good enough energy efficiency and a good enough aircraft performance. That's what we are choosing hydrogen at Beyond Aero to develop our first aircraft. Today, uh, Beyond Aero demonstrated the most powerful powertrain in Europe. Um, we will be live demoing this uh, in a few seconds, but this is an 85 kilowatt powertrain from hydrogen tanks to a propeller. And we integrated into an aircraft that we are actually being ready for test flight. And now I propose you to move for live demo of a ground test of this aircraft. So thanks to the team in the middle of the night in France, in Toulouse, where we are based, this is our aircraft in live. So um, you can see here the hydrogen storage system at the rear of the uh, aircraft, a fuel cell system, uh, as a passenger seat, power electronics, uh, uh, business avionics, and balance of plant, also system and air supply, plus um, the electrical engine uh, that guides the propeller. There is a pilot in this aircraft, uh, and we are ready for test flight. But now I propose that the team launch a ground test in live for you. So this is a hydrogen electric powered aircraft ready for test flight. So now I propose to move back to presentation because after this prototype subscale, this is the power of a car, we'll move to a real aircraft and in the go-to-market of business aviation. Business aviation, there is a lot of aircrafts and a lot of emissions. That's why we propose comparable performance without the direct emissions. So it's an eight, eight, six to eight passengers uh, aircraft, pressurized, so you fly in altitude, 
with speed and range of existing aircraft. So you can match the existing missions. This is possible thanks to our scalable portion architecture. Basically, it's three times a hydrogen truck, but for a, an aircraft. So we supply H2 tanks, H2 fuel cell, air supply system, and some batteries, and two electric motors for this architecture. And then we build the aircraft around it. So around it, it means how to integrate the tanks below the cabin of an aircraft, and how to integrate thermal management system. Also, an important part of beyond activity is to work with European airports for them to be ready for our jet. So 200 airports handle 80% of the traffic in Europe, and we're working with 50 of them to bring hydrogen uh, for our aircraft. Today, we have 620 million of letters of intent, and a fourth of our investors are actually clients. So we start with business jet, but on the, in the long run, aviation will be electric. So we'll scale this to regional and commercial platforms. At the end of the day, Beyond Aero has a possible CO2 reduction a contribution possible of 350 megaton of CO2 equivalent. So thank you for your attention. And happy to talk and connect. If you want to join the team, join us as a technical partner, or if maybe you want to buy a jet. Thank you very much. Wow. One of my favorite things to do is watch the judge reactions. And Healy leaned forward on, wow. <laughs> it was really good. I'm, I'm so a pilot, so, so I was like, this looks awesome. Well, let's, oh. start, let's start with Tess. Well, I want to ask you, can you, can you fly that? Because I can't buy it, but I would love to take a ride. Um, <laughs> as a former aerospace engineer, and I like to think bum, bum, I bum. still am an aerospace engineer, although I'm, this is my day job now, we are notorious for our three-letter acronyms, our three-letter regulatory bodies, whether it's the FAA here, although I think your team is in Toulouse, so ESA there. ESA, yeah. Tell me a little bit about how we're approaching certification for an yeah. entirely new airframe propulsion system, and I'm sure you have extra fun sprinkles as well. Yeah, so when we started the adventure, a few options were possible. Could we, how to decarbonize aviation? Maybe a big jet, maybe a, a regional aircraft, and we converged to business jet. And in this business jet, we've concluded that the only miracle to happen is certified hydrogen. Everything else in the aircraft is as conventional as possible. Mm -hmm. It means avionics or off the shelf. We work with airframe suppliers that work with Airbus or Boeing. Uh, it means electric engines, let's buy from aerospace suppliers. Uh, whatever we can buy and assemble, we do. That's for, at the end of the day, we have a conventional aircraft, um, and it means we have a lot of guidelines we could work with as a company to certify it, and the extra work we put is to certify hydrogen. That's the approach. Okay. All your pieces have good flight heritage. And then on your last slide, you had a certain amount of LOIs and commitment. Who are some of your customers? Who are some of those logos? Um, so we have two types. Uh, there's people flying private, um, maybe some of you if you want to discuss afterwards, <laughs> or uh, um, charters uh, that buy, buy tens or a dozen of aircraft to make available for a membership. So we have uh, a lot of known people. Uh, I don't know if I can quote them here. I don't do it. No, mostly, sure. down, mostly downside. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and maybe one the striking fact is they invest in the company. Uh, we discuss with them for client interview, then they sign a letter of intent that, oh, I have the problem, but my friends also have it. And maybe I can basically pre-buy my aircraft if I invest soon enough in the company. But that's how we work. Ely, let's go to you. Yeah, so super intrigued, of course. I had a, a technical question, which I'm going to test later. Um, I guess as I think about this, it's kind of one of those holy grail opportunities where it's, it's like it's a big bet, and it feels like it's going to require a lot of capital to get to a critical mass. I'm, I was just kind of chotting it down. It's like... You have the certification process, which is going to take a while. Then you have to do the testing, which is going to take a while. Then the production, and you have the infrastructure on top of that. And then you do the, the kind of go-to-market flywheel. So how much capital do you need for all those you know, 80 airports to have hydrogen and for you to have jets flying in and out to get this thing really moving? OK. So in terms of infrastructure, it's less of a problem that we thought initially, meaning this aircraft is a light, still a light aircraft. It's about three times the truck. So you can make it compatible with the hydrogen supply for trucks, hydrogen trucks. Uh, 
Mm. And in Europe, there's a lot of investment in the uh, uh, supply system and a lot of companies that are developing this uh, supply network. And so we are linking airports and energy suppliers so they can just connect the last, the closest station for a truck to the airport. And basically, since the aircraft is not too big, it consumes 150 kilograms of hydrogen per flight. Mm. Uh, a truck, a trailer truck for hydrogen that is uh, existing today, uh, there's a lot of them in, in the world, it could supply the airport for multiple days. One truck, multiple days, if we replace the entire market segment of these jets in these airports. Got so it. basically, the problem is for bigger platform, bigger aircraft later on. But Got today, it. it works quite well. Got it. On, on uh, maybe one word on the company side to finance such development. Yes, it will be a few hundreds of millions. Um, but at the end of the day, aviation will be electric. Yep. So we, need, we try to find the best approach to make it happen and happy to work with whoever is willing to make it happen. It could be technical partners, it could be... Um, it needs to happen. Uh, I think so. they all brought their checkbooks. <sighs> yeah, that's, that's not a scary number. I mean, like, that's... Okay, so fast follow-up is... So I was thinking about... Initially, I was going to say, could you retrofit existing airplanes to work on the system? Then I was like, ah, well, F it. I mean, how, how much lifespan does an airplane really have anyway? So when you think about the existing fleets out there you're targeting, how fast does the existing fleet degrade, and then what's your opportunity to refresh it? Quickly, like, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 20,000 uh, um, aircraft in this segment, and they have a lifespan of 20 years, so 1,000 a year. Okay. So there's 1,000 a year being sold right now in this market segment. So we'll replace as much as the production line are able to, to supply. Basically, that's how we see it. Let's get one more question in from Preeti. Um, so in order to change the world, you also need to make it affordable. And I was curious what aspect of aviation you're actually changing. So you still have to pay for the pilot. You still have to pay for the gate fees. You're swapping out fuel for hydrogen. Can you talk a little bit about cost of maintenance and ownership? Yeah. So the, the, our focus is that the overall aircraft is at the same price as you pay it today. But your maintenance cost and your fuel cost all will be lower. On maintenance, it's it's already existing on trucks. Uh, for fuel, it, it's already comparable with jet fuel. And as soon as you add a, a carbon tax on any uh, uh, jet fuel, you are uh, more competitive with hydrogen. Is it 25% more competitive? Or Today is same? equivalent. Comparable. And if you add a tax, as much as the tax, you, you get a decrease of, of the competitiveness for okay. uh, jet fuel. Thank I'm you. so sorry we're out of time. It's always a good sign, though, when you run out of time. <laughs> Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.